Professor P. C. Manoria, Executive President, Second World Congress on Cardiometabolic Medicine being held at Hotel Leela, Mumbai. With me is uh, Dr. Rajiv Agrawal, cardiologist of national and international repute with a special preference for lipid management. All of us know the last couple of years has revolutionized lipid management in atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Initially, we had statins, then we had ezetimibe, then we had PCSK9 monoclonal antibodies, then we had inclisiran and pemphotoic acid. So what is the current management strategy for a patient of ACS who comes to you and gets an angioplasty done? Thank you, Dr. Manoria, for such a wonderful meeting we had this morning. I think this is the most pertinent, relevant question when you have patients who have just got angioplasty done. Because we know atherosclerosis never sleep, it bounces back. And one of the most established secondary prevention strategies is lipid lowering. And as you have mentioned, these names of these drugs, they are used in isolation or in combination. But majority of the time, they are used in combination. They are better together because our LDL goals are getting very, very low. Something like one millimole, that means up to 40 or 30 milligram per deciliter. And single molecule is unlikely to achieve that goal. We were earlier on a very slow motion gear that will take a call on lipids, We'll recheck after two months, then we see how it is going. But now the approach is very, very aggressive. On day one, we know that majority of our patients, like in hypertension and diabetes, they need combination lipid lowering therapy. Majority of the time, because of the cost constraint, statin agitamide combination is the first thing to go because they are out of patent, cheap, safe and easily available. So I'll say the first intervention on secondary prevention, I'll go with all my might to reduce LDL with the statin and agitamide. And if I'm not able to achieve my goals, I'll go on to bempedoic acid, PCSK9 or inclisiran because once you add these molecules, the cost of treatment keeps on increasing. The scientific evidence of intensive lipid lowering in post-ACS patient is great. There's no doubt about it. But in our country, we see a lot of inertia and many patients get a recurrent card, uh, coronary event because of a lack of appropriate lipid management. So what, is, what are the reasons for this inappropriate lipid management? I think this is once again a very practical question, which is the problem we as clinic, clinician cardiologists face day to day, that our patients, despite abundance of literature and conviction and uh, uh, examples in public domain by senior colleagues, still we are not able to percolate down this message down and down. And that is why the conference is relevant today. And I think it is more of an inertia on the part of clinicians on hesitancy basis that we are not able to do it. And we keep firing, drilling down this message, down and down. I'll say with all my conviction, understanding and wisdom that all of us who deal with acute coronary syndrome, whether intervention or medical management, should chase very aggressively, vehemently with vengeance, LDL, because now the effects or benefits are seen within two weeks to four weeks. So it is not one year or two years. It's very, very early. And these drugs also reduce your inflammatory burden. So it's a double-edged weapon against a multi-pronged disease. And I think your question is very valid. And all of us together should use very aggressively lipid-lowering therapy. Uh, besides LDL, LP is also a highly atherogenic molecule. How do you look at the prospects of pelacarsin, which is undergoing the Horizon trial? You see, uh, LPA is atherogenic. There is no doubt about it. LPA can be reduced. There is no doubt about it. But what we are studying at the moment, as you said, Pelacarson in horizon trial, the outcome data. So first two part are well established. It is atherogenic. It can be reduced. But we have to wait for data whether it can be outcome-based benefit or not. If it is there, we have yet another tool 
to pacify atherosclerosis. Uh, what is the current status of triglycerides in atherosclerosis? This is a very contentious issue because our endocrinologist colleague, our clinicians who are practicing internal medicine, they are still obsessed with triglyceride. They talk Indian uh, atherogenetic uh, profile, they talk of diabetic atherogenetic profile which is biased and loaded with high triglyceride. But till today, we do not have any randomized controlled trial which convincingly shows that there is outcome benefit. I may be allowed to use the word that it is a cosmetic correction without outcome benefit. So, it may annoy a couple of my colleagues, but at the moment these drugs can reduce triglyceride without outcome benefit. So, I focus my patients whole lot of resources on LDL lowering, good control of diabetes, lifestyle modification to tame triglyceride access rather than jumping on to drug management. HDL is a fallen angel, it represents state of time. Do you think in future it may be revived? HDL is down and out. The tools like CTP inhibitors which started as HDL raising molecules, they have died out. New molecule called obisetrapib which is CTP inhibitor in presented by Dr. Kosik Ray in uh, European Society of Atherosclerosis just couple of days, ROSE trial. Again the emphasis is not on HDL raising, it is on LDL lowering by CTP molecule. So, at the moment I do not think HDL and triglyceride story will come back. I do not know about the future, but today as a clinician I think they are down and out. Thank you Dr. Rajiv Agrawal for the wonderful answers. Insights from the world's best medical minds. You are watching the right doctors.com.